honey? Mm. Mm. Did you hear that? Uh, no, what? Something fell downstairs. Oh, it's probably the cat. Mm. I'll go down and see what he's knocked over this time. Hurry back. a voice from the past. Sharon, what a wonderful surprise. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, Alex. Oh? Jack Morrison is dead. What happened? He was found murdered last night. And I believe you may be next. Jack Morrison was a good friend. We served together on the same parole board three years ago. Dr. Rain was the consulting psychiatrist. Sir, uh, if I understand correctly, Mr. Morrison is the third of just four board members who were found dead in the last few months. Uh, Dr. Rain was convinced that there was a connection. What do you think? Sharon is a... Reliable, sensible woman. She's also one of the best forensic psychiatrists in her field. Sir, that does not entirely answer my question. She's expecting you. Here are the files, Mr. Sinclair. Thanks. His wife asked me to deliver the eulogy, so I'll be at the funeral on Thursday. Sir, under the circumstances, I don't think that's a particularly good idea. If uh, what Dr. Rain suggests is true, you're likely to be the next target. I've got to be there. I was the one that convinced him to be on that board. But that doesn't make you responsible. No, but I feel responsible. I'll alert the team.
Come on, Pete. Frank Lewis dies in a house fire. Bobby Zagata drowns in a boating accident, and the man could swim. Mr. Ray's friend Morrison surprises a burglar and gets an ice pick for his trouble. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's nothing consistent about this M.O. Gabriel, how are you getting on? Of the 42 cases that Mr. Addington's board reviewed, uh, 30 were granted parole and 12 were denied. Ah, if there's any truth in Dr. Rain's theory, then it's those 12 we should be concentrating on. How many of them are still in prison? Four. That leaves eight. Eight guys still out on the street. Seems to me to be right up your alley. Track down eight cons. Piece of cake. Appreciate it, Pete. <laughs> That's why you get paid the big bucks. Gabrielle. We arrive in Chicago. Perhaps you'd look up Mrs. Morrison. Apparently, she's staying at this address with her sister. Jog her memory. See if there's anything that she forgot to tell the police. All right. I'll be seeing Dr. Rain. Mr. Morrison was dead when we arrived. Stabbed 13 times with an ice pick. The ice pick belonged to the Morrisons. Was there anything taken? Nah, I didn't have time. Yeah. What makes you so sure that it was a burglary? Yeah, this is a nice neighborhood. Easy pickings. Ah, uh, we think he didn't even realize anybody was home. The bedroom window looks out to the front. He came in the back, probably thought the house was empty. I think Mr. Morrison surprised him, and the guy stabbed him in a panic. Thirteen times? That's a bit excessive for a burglar. How you doing, Doc? Fine. Do you know Mr. Sinclair? No, Sharon Rain. Pleased to meet you. And you? Ah, excuse me for a moment. Alexander said that you worked for Scotland Yard. <laughs> I wonder why he keeps telling people that. Because you've tracked and found multiple killers before. Uh-huh. So you were doubting my credentials. Hmm? Yes, I always check. Well, in all those cases, there were definite patterns to follow. There is one here as well. But just the one. Remember, we're dealing with three very different MOs. And two of them could be accidents. He also said you were skeptical. Hmm. Well, that's kept me alive. The phoenix has risen. Hmm. What did you say? So said the phoenix has risen. It's written here on this card. I have one just like this. Charles Renfrew sent it to me. Charles Renfrew? I know that name. Yes, he's one of the men we denied parole. Yeah, one of the eight. No, thank you, Miss Sherman. My sister has been taking very good care of me. We're here to help find your husband's killer. So if there is anything you remember. I heard a noise. And Jack went downstairs. I heard a commotion and I went downstairs myself. Jack was lying on the floor. Did you see who was there? Could you describe the person? No, not really. It was a man. I got a glimpse of him. Um, it was dark and I was beside Jack. There was blood all over him. I did what I could to stop, but I couldn't. <laughs> the burglar didn't have to kill Jack. He could have taken anything we owned. Why did he do it? It chilled me when I got it. Phoenix is about to rise. Thanks for your help. Ah. Oh. So, when exactly was Renfrew released from prison? Six months ago, April the 10th. His prison term was up, he was a free man. I got the card two days later. And how long was he inside? Seven years, convicted of sexual assault. His lawyer maintained that it was his first offense and he was remorseful. <laughs> but you didn't buy that for a minute. No. I was working on a police task force at the time, looking for three missing teenage girls. We were all sure Renfrew was responsible. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough to connect him with the disappearances. Did you ever find the girls? No. Uh, it's all right. Don't worry. With me, he's one of my associates. This is Mr. Stone. He only looks like a felon. This is Sharon Rain. Hi, Doc. Your friendly felon. Hi. <laughs> so how do you get on? Pretty good. Found all eight guys. One guy's in a hospital in Arizona. Two guys are back yeah. in. What about Charlie Renfrew? Charlie Renfrew? 
That's easy. Six feet under. What? You sure about that? Yeah. Guy burned to a crisp in a car fire. When? July 2nd, three months ago. The same day Frank Lewis died. In a house fire. I wonder if he got a postcard, too. Here, look at this. Ah, Renfrew. Mm-hmm. Yesterday's postmark. So what are you saying here, Pete? We're looking for a dead guy? Yeah. Yeah. I did the autopsy on Renfrew, or what was left of him after the car fire. Pretty bad, huh? I've seen worse, but not much. Only positive ID was car registration and his dental records. You do any other checks? Highway body structure. You know where he's buried? I don't know. Why, you want to dig him up? Might just do that. You'll need a court order. Thanks for the advice. Um, you know who his dentist was? Yeah, guy named Schutzer on the west side. Can I borrow that? Appreciate it. Get it back. Dr. Schutz, I will be right out. Well, that's too bad. Detective Stone? What can I do for you? I'm looking for this guy, Charles Renfrew. Is a patient of yours? Oh, yeah. I remember him. Moody guy. Gave mm. me the creeps. Took some x-rays. Got a look in his eye. Hard to forget. These the x-rays? Tell you right now, these aren't Charles Renfrew's records. Renfrew came in one day to see me. Said he had a pain in his mouth. He had good teeth. I couldn't find anything. He took x-rays anyway. He insisted I take them. I did. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I still couldn't find anything. He paid, and he left. Did he ever come back? No. I went on holiday about a week later. When I came back, my secretary said the guy died in a car fire and that the police had taken the x-rays for ID. These are the records the police took? I told you, detective. These aren't Mr. Renfrew's. How do you know that? Renfrew's teeth were perfect. This mouth? Has a bridge in it. So you're telling me that Charles Renfrew broke into the dental office and replaced his own records with someone else's? Yes, sir. Someone else of the same height and build. He stalked and killed an innocent man so he could stage his own death. And now that poor man is lying in a grave marked Renfrew. Shows the bastard has absolutely no conscience, places no value on life or death. Except his own. Yeah, that certainly all fits in with what Dr. Rain believed about Renfrew. Sir, what were your impressions of the man? Well, at the time, he seemed like a model prisoner. He was clean-cut, well-spoken, well-behaved, highly intelligent. It was Dr. Rain who swayed the board, and she was right on the money, so we promptly denied him his parole. And he knew who the board members were who successfully blocked it. Oh, yes, he, he took a very special interest in his hearings. Locked up in jail, he had plenty of time to plan his revenge. Yes, and people like Jack Morrison, Frank Lewis, Bobby Sagata. And you, sir. Oh, come on, Peter. Don't be so damn melodramatic. Maybe we should pay a visit to Renfrew's cellmate. How long you share a cell with this guy? Must have been two years. They moved him in with me just after he'd been turned down by the parole board. Must have got pretty burned about being denied parole. Yeah. At first. And then he just got more wacko. Like he had some revelation. Always talking about resurrection. Would this guy go religious? No, that would have been okay. But religion seems to give people an anchor. Now he just got more weird. And I've seen some crazies in the service. You know what I mean, Stone? Mm. But 
this guy takes a cake. What's your gig? Tell it straight. I figure the guy's after my boss. Word is, Renfrew's dead. Car accident. You believe that? You believe them when they said all those guys went MIA were dead? I knew they were alive. Yeah, me too. Just like I know Renfrew ain't dead. Renfrew likes to kill. Man's never been convicted of murder. That doesn't mean nothing. You know how I can find this guy? You got any smokes? We're certain that at least one of the missing girls, the third one, Krista, was abducted in the park. This one, she went jogging and never came back. You first start to suspect that Renfrew was responsible. Not until they picked him up for the sexual assault charge. It took place in the same park where Krista disappeared. Hmm. Was there anything else that was suspicious? Everything about him. There's patterns I recognize, intuitions I've learned to trust. Renfrew seemed to enjoy our sessions. He knew I was on to him. And he still didn't give you enough to hold up in court. Right. He was seeing how far he could go, but never giving me anything concrete. He was playing with me. Yeah. Yeah, well, now his little games are over. Just change the rules. Yeah. Renfrew had a lady. Brought all those mystical New Age books about resurrection and destiny. Who was she? A pen pal. One of them crazy women with a fixation for cons. The badder the better. <laughs> Always writing, coming to visit. What's her name? Joni. Something. Let me handle this. John Simpson? Who are you? I'm doing a study on prison pen pals. Who gave you my name? Oh, I got it from the prison records. Is that your boyfriend? Yes. Yes. Does he hit you? No. No, he wouldn't hurt a fly. He's, he's just a very sweet guy. What do you want? I just want to ask you a few questions. Just a minute. your penthouse was Charles Renfrew. One of them, yeah. You visited him every week during his last year in prison, right? Do you still see him? In my dreams. He's dead now. I'm sorry. Did you know him well? He answered all my letters. Why did you choose him as a pen pal? I didn't choose him. It was destiny. He was in jail for rape. There's two sides to every story. There's good in everybody if you look deep enough. You moved up here to be closer to him? I like the country. Did he live here with you? Listen, I'm not interested. Find someone else to study. If you'll excuse me,
finished, sweetheart. Oh, in case you change your mind. This is my phone number. Don't wait for my call. Well. How many papers is this in, Peter? Well, I'm afraid all the local dailies are carrying a version, sir. Your friend for really is our guy. He'll find it. See, part of the psychopathic profile is obsession. Many of these guys have even been known to, to run scrapbooks on their atrocities. If he's out there looking for you, he'll find you. It's not only me he's concerned with. It's Dr. Rain he's after as well. Yes, I know, sir. And we've already stepped up on security on her, too. Good. We'll do what you have to. Sir. The man's a killer. And he's brilliant. You said so yourself. It's too dangerous. Oh, no, don't you worry. Peter's taking every precaution. I'll be all right. I've lost too many people in my life, Alexander. You're not gonna lose me. Your car's ready, sir. I didn't hear you drive up. Where have you been? Out. Out? Well, you know, I like to be alone sometimes. I was meditating. Where's the paper? Well, it's on the coffee table. Oh, some woman was here asking about you today. Don't worry, I got rid of her. Who was she? Somebody doing some study on cons and pen pals. A study for who? I don't know. I didn't ask. How'd she find you? Prison records or something? What did you tell her? Nothing. I said you were dead. Good. Did she leave you a number where you can reach her or something? Yeah. I threw it away. You threw it away? Me. I can't get it. It's here in the garbage. You okay, honey? You okay there? You okay? Yes, yeah, Josh. Good, good. Good. I just gotta know who my fans are, you know? Why do you think Renfrew hasn't come after you yet? After all, it was your report that influenced the parole board to keep him inside for his full term. I think he wants me to witness his handiwork first. Hmm. Because he has a grudging respect for you because you found out who he really was and what he'd really done. Oh, yes, I'm sure of that. He's not only going to prove me right, he's going to do it very graphically. He's going to show me he's even better than I predicted. Okay. Well, if that pattern holds, then he really will try to kill Alexander first. And then kill me? Yeah. I don't think you should go anywhere alone for a while. In fact, I've already put you under 24-hour surveillance. Look, I know they're highly confidential, but uh, do you think I could see Renfrew's case notes? Tiny, why don't you got my message and call me back? Who the hell is this? I got a message saying call my lawyer at this number. You ain't my lawyer. No, but you need my advice more than you need his. About what? 
I'm just calling about a friend of yours, a guy named Holstrom. Hey. What about it? Well, the word is, he's learning how to sing. Sing about what? From what I hear, about your little enterprise. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if the guy sings any louder, we're gonna have to cut off your craft supplies. Don't jive me, man. <laughs> if you don't believe me, why don't you wait and find out? These are all the session notes I'm going through. Yes, why? Is something missing? Well, I, no, obviously it's a very complete psychopathic profile, but, you know, what's interesting is that it really doesn't seem to be very much about his childhood. I didn't find out much. Although he did delight in telling me that he used to love going into the woods with his father's 22 to shoot birds and squirrels, even dogs, if he could get away with it. Used to like to skin them. I wonder what he was trying to tell you. Dr. Rain. When? Okay, tell me everything you find out. Hank Holstrom was found dead in his cell. Overdose. Is he a drug user? No, not that I know of. It seems that Charles Renfrew has a very long reach. Mr. Addington's a very powerful man, Joni. Just wish there was some way I could get him off my back. Well, you can make anybody do whatever you want them to. When you set your mind to it. A guy like Addington has a closed mind. He's a good friend of Dr. Rain's, and I told you what she's like. No, it's the same old story. Once you've been in jail, no one believes in you anymore. I always believed in you. I know. Believe me, Charlie, I won't let anybody ever hurt you. Maybe I can help you. Maybe you can. Look, this is ridiculous, Mr. Stone. Get me out of this damn stupid thing. The bulletproof for vest is for you. It's not for me. Yeah. Now, listen, Mr. Ray. Yeah. I can slip slide in and out of places with the best of them. Yeah, I bet you. But the way I figure this killer has got the guts and skill to do the same thing, and he ain't playing with a full deck. Well, I suppose I. <laughs> you give me a mirror while I tie my bulletproof tie. <sighs> I suppose I would be safer if I just never left the office at all. Good point. Uh, uh, coat. Car's ready, sir. Thank you. Well, you ready, uh, Mr. Stone? Let's do it. What's up, everyone? Remember, if this guy's out there, he's smarter than all of us put together. You wearing your vest? You got yours on? Sure as hell have. Don't let the boss total just get him in, get him out. Right. Think this guy is gonna show? I sincerely hope not. And we'll get a crack at him another time. Let us 
leave our departed brother, and let us live in the hope of the glorious coming of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God himself give our brother, Jack Morrison, the fullness of his peace. Amen. Scots. The address there is 113 Oak Drive. Also, donations can be made to the church in the name of the dearly departed. May you rest in peace. Alexander all right? Yes, he's fine. Right now, we're just trying to see what we can get out of Joan Simpson. For the moment, she keeps denying that Renfrew's even alive. OK, I'll try and be there as soon as I can. Good. I've got a court appearance to make, but I shouldn't be more than an hour or so. OK, then we'll see you here. And Sharon, please don't take any chances. I won't. OK, bye. I'm sorry, Doctor. Come on, lady. The guy sent you on a suicide mission. Now, where the hell is he? It's done. Miss Simpson, what do you think would have happened to you if you had killed Mr. Addington? I don't know the future. I just allow the flow of destiny to carry me where it needs to. You're lucky you're not dead, lady. It's done. You know, you're going to end up in jail for this. If that's an experience I need in my life journey, then why would I fight it? You don't have to walk me to my car, Sal. Hey, he gets me some air. Thanks, Sal. My pleasure, Doc. the last time. Where is Charles Renfro? He's dead. Then why did you want to kill Mr. Huntington? It's the new age. There's no place for people who work against it. What the hell happened, Sal? I walked her to the car and checked it before she drove away. Yeah, but she didn't show at court. Say anything about any other appointments? No, nothing. Oh, hell. She understood him too well. She was supposed to help him, but she didn't. If she did, she wouldn't have made him stay in jail with common criminals. Her and your Mr. Addington. Charlie Renfrew is probably going to kill Dr. Ray. Charlie is dead. Johnny, we know he isn't dead. The police dug up his grave. It wasn't Charlie inside. It was somebody else who he'd killed. Someone he killed so he could be reborn. That's not rebirth, that's murder. Have you ever met Dr. Wren? Charlie told me all about how she hurt him. Let me show you her picture. Look at that. Have a look at it. I said look at it! You get to change her destiny, too. I don't have anything to do with it. Oh, yes, you do. Because if you don't tell us where he is, she's going to be killed. Just 
like this little girl. And this one. And this one. Three teenage girls. Well, they've been missing for a decade. That's ten years. Charlie, your Charlie killed them. Nobody dies, really. They just go to another life. A higher form. We're all just spirits. I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe in waiting for luck. I make it. Joni always talks about destiny. You know about destiny? I create destiny. That's why you're with me. Now, we have an understanding, you and me. But you never helped me, and Joni did. You know why? You know why? Because she believes in me. She admired me. I know. You were angry that I didn't admire you. Well, I liked you, Doctor. I really did. But then, you betrayed me. Like Hank Holstrom did? See, now, I knew that you'd understand my message. But Hank didn't. Because Hank's not so smart. No, Hank's not very smart at all. Is he? Because when you live in the jungle, you gotta live by the rules. And you let the right people know he broke them. Worked rather well, don't you think? When Charlie was alive, he never hurt me. Now that he's dead, I don't see how he could. Charlie didn't like failures or mistakes, did he? No. Why should he? He beat you up when he didn't do the right thing. You still have the bruises. That's just residue from his old life. He's sorry when he hits me. He goes out in the woods by himself and meditates to purge it. Where does he go? I understand how you're feeling. I know what it is to be in love. It's more than that. He needs, needed me. Like I said before, destiny brought us together. Nothing anybody can do can change destiny. Ow! Oh. Why don't you let me go? Turn yourself in. I can help you. In a maximum security psychiatric hospital? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, call me crazy, but I like my freedom. And freedom to kill? Ah! Ah! Oh, geez, did I scare you there? I'm sorry, doctor. Nothing. Do you recognize this? I'll tell you what it symbolizes. I know what it symbolizes. Like hell you do. This symbolizes Charlie Renfrew's death warrant. For Sharon Rain. Leave me alone. Where does he go to meditate? I can't tell you that. Leave her alone. Police will find it soon enough. Then they'll shoot him dead without asking questions. They won't. Where does Johnny go out to meditate? Do you know something? This cabin, it's a... Well, it's a very special place to me. It's where I brought them. The girls? Very good, Doctor. Very good. You are good. Of course, you figured out pretty quickly that I was the one that took them, didn't you? You told me in so many words. Yes, that's true, I did, didn't I? But you never knew where. Doctor, would you like me to tell you what I did with them? Careful how you answer that, Doctor. You be careful, because you are a trained 
professional, right? Trained! Listen to what your patients tell you, objectively, this passionately. No judgments, right? Because why? You are not! You are not a judge! Right? Well? Tell me what you did to them. Perfect. You did that perfectly. And so politely. Impressive. You know what? I'm gonna do one better. I'm gonna show you. Thank you very much. Alexander says he'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I will, Sharon. Yeah. Bye. How is she? Oh, she's fine. Yeah, she sends her regards to everyone. Deepest thanks. You know, I cannot believe we allowed that guy to get so close. It's as close as Renfrew will ever get, thank God. Should never have come to this. A lot of innocent people got killed just because the system couldn't prove what Sharon Ray knew to be true. Yeah, bloody system. Satellite link. Alexander, I'm glad you're safe. Thank you, Miss Provo. Perhaps uh, we can have dinner tonight? Oh, I'd like that. Not your uh, Bennett, uh, something a little quieter. <laughs> I'll make the reservations. nightmares without the ones you never wake up from. It's time to take back the nights.